Page. You are welcome to join that to experience about a 10 to 15 minute um, story and wondering time. We also have things throughout the week. Um, we have a kids time to connect over Zoom every Wednesday at 430. And then we're also posting um, some videos and activities de designed and developed by our nursery staff at First UMC and our Sunday school teachers. So. If any of you are interested in getting more information about that, you can email me and I'll show you my email at the end of this. We also have some adult ed um, options happening at 9 a.m. 
on Sunday mornings, our Prayers of the Heart group meets for some time of guided, for some guided reading time and reflection um, and meditation. And um, that is happening every Sunday at 9 a.m. over Zoom. And we also have some other Sunday morning classes that are looking to do some connecting over the next few weeks. That the time and dates of those haven't been nailed down, but they will be happening. So for any of this, we aren't posting our Zoom links online because we want to keep them private to our um, people we know. So you are welcome to email me if you want to get any updated information or any Zoom links for these opportunities. My email is christianedfunc at wvi.com. That's christianedfunc at wvi.com. Thanks. Bye. During this time of social distancing and not being able to gather at the church, I've been offering a time on Tuesdays to gather online using Zoom. That's a way that we can see each other, talk to one another. We have a time of sharing at the beginning, and then we move into a time of reflecting on a scripture passage, and we close with prayer, holding one another in prayer and sharing our prayer concerns and our joys and our blessings in our lives. These happen at 11 o'clock and 7 o'clock on Tuesdays. Look for information in your newsletter of how to connect to this time, and it is for all people in Open Door Churches. Thank you. Church Young Adult group continues to meet on Wednesday evenings from 7 to 9 p.m. and at this time we're meeting on Zoom 
and each week we share in a time of checking in with one another and just a great time of community and conversation and spiritual discussion. If you would like to join this group, uh, please send me an email and I can send you the link. Hi there, this is Jeff Lowry with a few words about our Open Door Youth Group. We meet on Thursday evenings from 7 to 8.30 and on Sunday afternoons from 1 to 2.30 via Zoom. We gather together to connect, to help each other grow, to play some games, have some fun, and um, we hope you'll join us, um, any youth 6th through 12th grade. Um, the Zoom links are in our weekly emails that come out. And um, if you like more information, please don't hesitate to, to contact me and I'll send you the information. Thanks and hope to see you soon. Welcome to worship with Open Door Churches of Salem-Kaiser. We are a collection of United Methodist churches that share together in ministry. We are grateful that you are here to worship on this day of ascension, and we look forward to the messages that pastors Dan and Sandy have to share with us this day. We pray that as we worship together, God's spirit may be in our midst, 
And even though we are worshiping from different places in our homes, that we are together as the body of Christ, worshiping. Thanks be to God for that gift, and may the Spirit be present as you worship, as we worship together. Let us share together in the call to worship responsibly. Mystery of God, draw us near. Fill our minds with awe. Wisdom of God, surprise us. Encourage us with hope. Glory of God, shine through our lives. Reveal your power and your glory. In the mystery, the wisdom, the glory of God, let us worship. With one voice, let us pray. Unknowable God, as we look to Jesus today, give us the same hope, spirit, power, mission, and purpose that we see in him. Help us to trust a future that we are unable to see. Guide us into your ways that we may glimpse the spirit already at work in our lives, revealing your truth and empowering us to bear witness to Christ's love. We pray this in the name of Jesus, your mystery, your wisdom, your glory. Amen. Our Bible reading this morning is from John's Gospel, the 16th chapter, verses 5 through 16. In this passage, Jesus is explaining to his disciples that he will soon be with them no more. He explains that this is for their good, because when he is gone, he will send the Holy Spirit to be with them, to teach and to guide them. We will read it on this Ascension Sunday as we remember Jesus ascending to heaven and returning to God. But now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer, about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but he will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. 
All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. A little while, and you will no longer see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me. Here is God's word to us. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Good morning. Today we are still in the mystery of Easter. Jesus has died, resurrected, came back to visit his friends. And on this Sunday, we celebrate Jesus's ascension into heaven. So let's begin by listening to that story. After Jesus appeared to his disciples, he was with them and told them not to be afraid. He was going away. And though that might seem sad and scary, he told them, do not be sad or scared because God would still be with them. God would send the Holy Spirit to remain with his people on earth. Then Jesus took his disciples up to a mountain. He blessed them. And after blessing each one of them, he was carried up into heaven. The disciples went back to the city filled with joy. This is a story filled with mystery. I wonder how Jesus got up into heaven. I wonder where that heaven is. I wonder what the Holy Spirit feels like. I wonder how Jesus is still with us. There are so many mysteries. But one thing we do know is that Jesus promised that he was not leaving us, that God would send the Holy Spirit to be with us and we would not be alone. Sometimes it's hard to feel the Holy Spirit and to know that Jesus is still with us. But I think about the ways that our five senses connect to who Jesus is and where the Holy Spirit is in the world. I wonder, where you see Jesus or the Holy Spirit. Maybe in a smile from a friend or a stranger, maybe in the rays of the sunlight. And I wonder where you feel Jesus or the Holy Spirit. Maybe it's a feeling of peace deep down inside of you. Maybe it's in the hug from a friend or a loved one. Maybe it's from being wrapped up cozy in a blanket. I wonder where you hear Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Maybe it's in the rushing waves of the ocean or the sound of a beautiful song. And I wonder where you taste Jesus. Maybe in the bread and wine or juice at communion. Or maybe you taste the Holy Spirit in a warm, beverage that you love. I wonder where you smell Jesus or the Holy Spirit, maybe in the smell of a beautiful flower or the smell of bread breaking. Sometimes we just need to open up our senses and recognize that Jesus is still with us. I wonder what that means for you today. I wonder how you've experienced the Holy Spirit with you.
As you can probably tell, today is Ascension Sunday. You've heard the Ascension story from John chapter 16, but I wanted to share just a few more verses from the book of Acts. Hear these words. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. But they were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood before them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking up into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. May God bless the reading of his holy word. Amen. So, in today's lesson from Acts, the disciples are gathered with their families in an upstairs room somewhere in Jerusalem. So much had happened during the past few months that it was hard to put it all together. They had accompanied Jesus into the city, receiving a royal welcome fit for a king. Then there was their last supper together, followed by Judas's betrayal and the arrest in Gethsemane, their own narrow escape from the, from the soldiers, and that horrible crucifixion. They had just about given up all hope when the risen Jesus appeared before them, ate with them, and then for six more weeks instructed them about the kingdom of God. But just when it all started to make sense, just when Jesus gave them a promise and a purpose, he left them again. Yet this time, the disciples saw it for themselves. Immediately after Jesus promised them that the Holy Spirit would give them power to be witnesses to the ends of the earth, he was taken up before their very eyes. Now what were they to think? When were they going to get this power? What were they supposed to do until then? And when the Holy Spirit did give them power, how is that going to help them witness to the ends of the earth? After all, Jesus didn't even tell them when that might be, let alone when God would bring in the new kingdom. Those earliest Christians must have felt a little overwhelmed and confused, trying to adjust to one life-changing experience after another. Who could they count on? Who could they depend upon? So many questions and only a few answers. Just a promise and a purpose, a gift and a mission. So how do we adjust to all the changes we're going through in these days? How do we as the church respond to the changes within the community, changes within ourselves? How do we respond when we are overwhelmed and confused? And to be honest, a little fearful of the changes happening all around us. What can we count on when everything seems to be out of control? Who can we depend upon, really? The story is told about one day, Pastor Tom was getting into his car in the church parking lot and he noticed a tiny chipmunk nestled comfortably in the shadows just behind the driver's side front tire. Well, this effectively stopped the pastor from backing out of his parking space. Unable to back up and unwilling to drive across the church lawn, Pastor Tom decided he would get rid of the chipmunk. So he began clapping his hands loudly, encouraging the chipmunk to move on. 
and it worked. The startled chipmunk darted away. Unfortunately, it settled behind the front tire of the passenger side. So again, Pastor Tom clapped, and this time our chipmunk ran to the right front, right rear tire. By now, you've already guessed that there are two more clapping episodes accompanied by some yelling, as well as a gathering audience of neighborhood children. And they brought out our little furry fin friend and it went back to its original spot. Suddenly, Pastor Tom and the children, and especially the chipmunk, heard loud and insistent chattering from a larger chipmunk sitting beneath the grapevines bordering the lawn. Hearing a welcome voice and seeing a familiar face, the little chipmunk scooted off to safety. Perhaps that chipmunk regaled his family and friends with stories of the many fast and scary changes he had experienced. Perhaps he chattered his thank you to them repeatedly. Who knows, he may have gained a new appreciation for what really matters in life, for what we really need to hold on to when changes are happening all around us. So here's the lesson. When the challenges of life become overwhelming, stay close to where you know the love is. Our chipmunk friend never strayed from where he could see and hear that other chipmunk who loved him. No matter how large the threat or how terrifying the sounds, the little chipmunk stayed close to the sure and certain sights and sounds of love. The sounds of promise soon became a vis visible reality as the frightened animal scampered from tire to tire, but always staying close to the chatter of encouragement and the visibility of supporting relationships. And that is the core of this Acts text. Here, the risen Christ gives the overwhelmed disciples a promise and a purpose, a gift and a mission. Here in his parting words, Jesus promises them that the Holy Spirit will soon give them power for an amazing mission. In Jesus' own words, after receiving this gift, the disciples' purpose was to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. This was an incredible promise, but a seemingly impossible purpose. How were they going to accomplish all this? Where could they start? Who could they recruit to help them? What was their strategic plan? Where would their funding come from? What were the most critical scripture texts and theological insights necessary to implement this mission? Do those questions sound familiar? They're the same questions we ask when we are facing a new mission opportunity. But before the disciples could ask these questions or even think of more, Jesus ascended into heaven. What an awesome sight that must have been. So now what? Just stay there looking at the sky while they wait for the gift of power that Jesus promised? While they were staring there, staring there at the clouds, suddenly two angels came to them and said, Why are you standing there looking into the sky? This same Jesus who's been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. In other words, quit standing around. Get busy. He gave you a mission to be his witnesses. Get moving already. And they did. They had heard the promise of Jesus and they had a purpose to fulfill for Jesus. Now what they needed was to wait for the gift of power that would come from the ascended Jesus. 
So how did the disciples cope with uncertainty and confusion as they waited for this promised gift? How did they begin to develop specific methods to address the overall purpose of their mission? Well, today's text describes the disciples' response as well as some possibilities for ourselves. After all, the Lord has given us the same promise and the same purpose, the same gift and the same mission. But it is likely that we, like those first disciples, find ourselves waiting for more specific directions. When and how will life and church get back to normal? What will we do when the new pastors come? And how is it all going to work? These are our questions. Well, where did the disciples go? What did they do? Well, they went where Jesus told them to go, to Jerusalem. And of course, Jerusalem was the center of Jewish religion. It was the focal point of the mission of the church. That is where the church began and where Christianity spread. For the disciples, Jerusalem was the very center of God's loving actions, the intersection of promise and purpose, gift and mission. So the disciples went back to Jerusalem. So where do we go when we are anxious and confused by life's challenges? The risen Jesus told the disciples to stay in Jerusalem, but the ascended Jesus invites us to the center of God's loving actions for us and for the world, which for us is the body of Christ, the church. The church is where we know the promise is heard and the gift of power is given. The church is where our mission is articulated and our specific purpose in life is clarified. And I'm not just talking about our church buildings. We are still the church, no matter where we are. But what did the disciples actually do when they got back to Jerusalem? And what are we supposed to do today in the church? Especially when the church is so different for us now. How does a general promise become a specific purpose? What is this gift? And how long do we have to wait before we get it? Well, back in the cities, the, the disciples remained close to where they knew God's love and encouragement were located among God's faithful people. And they didn't have to wait long before they received the gift of the Holy Spirit and their mission began. We celebrate that day as Pentecost, which is next Sunday, by the way. And remember, God has already given us the gift that Jesus promised to the disciples. With a splash of baptismal water and a word of promise, the Holy Spirit welcomes us into the body of Christ, the fellowship where God's active love is demonstrated. Within this community, God's promise of forgiveness is boldly proclaimed and the risen and ascended Christ is shared. Constantly living within this community of believers, God's people do receive guidance for growth and a purpose for living. So hang in there, learn from the chipmunk, stay close to where God shows you love is. At the cross, an empty tomb, a splash of water, some bread broken and some wine poured. Listen for God's word of love and forgiveness here. Watch for the Spirit showing you what love looks like and sounds like in your own lives. Today, the ascended Christ has given us a promise of love and a gift of his presence. We just have to open our hearts to receive it. Within that gift is our mission and our purpose. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Today is Ascension Sunday. It may not have made it to your top favorite Sundays of the year, but Ascension Sunday, like all other Sundays in the Christian year, is designated as special because it tells us a part of the important story of Jesus' life and ministry. Ascension is that time that I believe bridges us between Easter and Pentecost, Pentecost beginning next week. You see, we sometimes forget that the Easter message of Jesus is alive didn't just happen on Easter morning, but it occurred over a 40-day period where Jesus appeared to his disciples on numerous different occasions, and we're told that he talked to them about the kingdom of God, and he reminded them about the promise and gift of the Holy Spirit that was yet to come. And the Holy Spirit is what we celebrate coming to us on Pentecost. If you look in the very beginning of the book of Acts, uh, Luke writes in that opening chapter, and he says that Jesus appeared numerous times over that 40-day period. And Paul writes in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, that at one time, Jesus appeared to more than 500 people all at the same time. So from Easter to the Ascension, when he ascended into heaven, there was this 40-day period of time when he was appearing to his disciples and he was teaching them. If I were to say, what is the message of those 40 days of Easter? It is, Jesus is alive. It's as if God wanted them to understand and repeated the message over and over again across 40 days so that it would sink into their very souls and then they would be ready for the message that was coming at Pentecost. Today's story is an account of what Jesus was doing in this preparatory time. He was reminding them that he was ascending to be with God in order that the Spirit would be given. The passage says he was working with his disciples and he said to them, I tell you the truth. It is for your good that I go away, because unless I go away, the counselor or the spirit will not come to you. But if I go away, I will send him to you. Now you can imagine their reaction. It would be exactly our reaction had we been in their place. They really can't comprehend that it would be for their good that he would go away. They would much rather have him there with them as they've always known him. But the truth is, for the fulfillment of the gospel and what God was doing, they had to let go of him and now be ready to embrace the new understanding, the new message that was about to come to them at Pentecost. And so Ascension Sunday is that bridge between the Easter message, he is alive, and the Pentecost message, the gift of the Spirit, has been given to each one of us. So I want to talk a little bit this morning about that in-between stage and why it's so important to understand. We must understand that it is better for us that he would go because when the Spirit comes, God's purpose can be fulfilled in and through all of us. So how really is it better when he talks about that to them? Well, it is better because once the Spirit comes, now he will always be with them or with us, always, everywhere. You remember when Jesus was alive physically, walked the earth. People were always trying to get to him, to be with him, to get his attention. I think about the woman who had a hemorrhaging and, and she needed healing and she thought if I can just get to him in the crowd and touch him, then I'll be okay. Or I think about the people who had a friend who was sick and they put him on a stretcher and they carried him to where Jesus was and they couldn't even get near Jesus so they tore open the roof in the building where he was and lowered their friend down. Or that story about Bartimaeus, who was a blind beggar, 
And Jesus was passing by and he heard that it was Jesus and he stood up and he started screaming, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. And others told him, be quiet, don't bother the Lord. But he just kept screaming and he got Jesus's attention and Jesus was able to heal him. You see, people have always struggled and sometimes I still think we feel like we've, we've got to find Jesus. We've, we've got to get close to Jesus. We've, we've got to get Jesus' attention. But the message of the Holy Spirit is that the Spirit of Christ, the living Christ, is always with us everywhere, fully giving us God's attention no matter what. A second thing we need to remember about why it's important that he go and the Spirit come is, he makes it so clear that it is the Holy Spirit that will empower us to be his disciples, to live the life he calls us to, and that the Spirit will give us the gifts as well as, as the empowerment to do that. Uh, Acts chapter 1, again, when Jesus is talking with his disciples before his ascension, he says, now wait, and you'll receive power when you receive the promised gift of the Holy Spirit. And then you will be able to be my disciples. And what he's talking about is not only the, the empowering spiritual presence always everywhere with them, but that that spirit uses the gifts and abilities that we have in a way that helps fulfill God's purpose for our lives. Each one of us, the Spirit of God living in us, empowering us and using the gifts and abilities that God gives us to fulfill the purpose for our lives and God's purpose in lives of people around us. I thought the youth last Sunday, if you got to see their service, did a great job of talking about how God uses the variety of people and experiences, and that's because of the Holy Spirit. The third thing I think of when Jesus is saying, it is better that I go and send the Spirit, is that he talks about the Spirit in a variety of ways as teacher or counselor or advocate, the one who will lead us into all truth. And what he's reminding us is that um, we will always now have an advocate and a counselor and a teacher. So that moment by moment as we face the circumstances we face in our lives, the frustrations and the difficulties and all the questions that come up, we turn and trust in the Spirit to give us wisdom and guidance and to counsel us as we go along the way. Through the Spirit, the counsel and presence of Jesus is always with us. And then the other thing that I think is even more important to comprehend, maybe not more important, certainly as, and that is because of the Spirit, there now is this vast worldwide network for good and the fulfillment of God's purpose. You see, when that was only embodied in Jesus, it had limitations of space and time and place. But now that the Spirit has been given to all people, there's this vast network of good and God's purpose that can be fulfilled and spread across all of creation. It's been one of the things that I have so much appreciated as we wrestle with this time in the coronavirus, where we've been able to see how a vast array of different people have been engaged to do good and to serve and and to seek to help one another. And and you can almost see this worldwide network of teachers and children and senior citizens, of teenagers or farmers or truckers or garbage collectors or restaurant workers. We see nurses and doctors, scientists, musicians, factory workers, postal service workers, this vast network of people through whom God is working and can work and will work as we allow and embrace the work of the Spirit in our lives. 
So how does this happen? Well, it's like everything. First of all, we've got to know the truth. And that's what the biblical story is about, is to teach us the truth. Jesus is alive. Let's be ready, as he asked us to, to embrace the gift of the Holy Spirit. And it always comes to us by grace. It's a free gift. We don't earn it or deserve it. And we enter into it through faith, by trusting, believing, having confidence, living our lives as though it is our reality. And that's what this story is all about. It is better that he go and ascend back into heaven in order that the Spirit would come and God's purpose would be worked out in the lives of ordinary folks like you and me through the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us believe and trust and have confidence in that wonderful truth. As our Lord ascends, we prepare ourselves for the Spirit. Amen. We are grateful for this gift of technology that is allowing us to connect with one another at this time of physical distance. We take a moment now to lift up our prayers by naming them aloud in our space or by typing them in the chat section of this video. We share in prayers of thanksgiving, prayers of grief, prayers of hope, and prayers of gratitude. O oh God, with mouths gaping open and eyes looking heavenward, we trace the ascension of our beloved Savior, Jesus Christ, back to you. We would like to stand here looking heavenward and thinking about how much Jesus means to us, but we are called to lower our eyes and get moving to serve you in this world. Lord, we can hold the image of his ascension in our hearts, but our hands and spirits must be ready to do the work that you have set before us. You have asked us to live out our resurrection faith in service, offering peace and justice, hope and healing to all whom we meet. It is easy for us to lift the names of those near and dear to us in prayer in our worship service. We want your healing mercies for all who are ill, who mourn, who are lost and alone. We want to rejoice in prayer with those who have received special joys during this week. All these things are important to us, and we know they are important to you. Help us to live the prayers we ask. Help us to be agents of healing and mercy, of peace and hope. We offer our lives and prayers to you in the name of our ascended Lord Jesus Christ. And together we pray the prayer that your son taught us to pray. Sharing our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I have a couple of announcements for you this morning. While our church buildings continue to be closed, ministry is still occurring in our community and in our world. This ministry is made possible by your generous gifts, tithes, and donations. And so we encourage you to continue with your generous gifts either by mail or by giving online. I would like to remind you that our Bishop Elaine Stanowski has extended our church closure date to June 15th. And during this time, we will continue to worship online together on Sundays at 10 a.m. This next Sunday is Pentecost, and there are two opportunities for you to participate in this worship service. The first is to send in a picture a drawing or a coloring of how you view the Holy Spirit. And then the second is to 
send in a video of you playing or singing Spirit of the Living God. Both of these contributions need to be sent uh, to my email by Tuesday this week, May 26th. And if you would like further detailed information, you can check out our social media pages as well as your most recent newsletters. Now may the one who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or think fill your life with the mystery, power, and awe of Christ's Spirit. Amen.